Hi everyone, so today I am going to show you how to make lentil curry. Let's get started. So first thing we need is 200 grams of red lentils, 150 grams of yellow split peas, and 150 grams of dried chickpeas. Next we want to take those and put them into a large bowl full of cold water. Okay, so you can see that I've well covered these with water because um, you want to leave these overnight or preferably for 24 hours. What I also do is every 6 hours I'll rinse the lentils and put fresh water on them. So while those are soaking guys I just want to say thank you very much to everyone that took part in the poll over on our Facebook page. Every couple of weeks I'll put up a new poll to see what recipes everyone is interested in and would like to see on our YouTube channel. And while I'm talking about our channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button down in the bottom right there and give this video a like. So it's the next day and I'm just going to drain these out and place them into a large pot. I've also covered these with water and I'm just going to add one teaspoon of turmeric powder. And just stir that into the pot. I'm also going to add just a pinch of salt. And you just want to cook those at a medium heat until they come to a boil. Once they come to a boil, just turn your heat down so that it simmers. And we're going to let those simmer for about an hour. So it's been an hour and our lentils and chickpeas are now cooked. Um, most of the water should have evaporated away but if there's still a lot of water remaining you can always strain that out. So next step is we're going to prepare our spices. So to start we need one medium onion, chopped finely, and four tomatoes which we are going to slice and remove the seeds from the inside. To remove the pulp from inside a tomato, I just cut them in half and use a spoon to scoop out the center. There we go. I also remove the hard white bit from the tomato as well. And you just want to cut the tomato up into small pieces. About one centimeter size pieces will do fine. But you don't have to be that accurate, just as long as they're not big chunks. So once you have your onion and your tomatoes chopped, you just want to heat up a frying pan with some oil. So I've added about a tablespoon of oil to the frying pan, I'm just going to let that get nice and hot so we can start frying our onions. I forgot to say, you also want to add a green chilli to this as well, just chop it up nice and fine. Just going to add my onions. chilies. Give them a good stir around the pan. You want to let these cook until they get a, start to get a nice brown colour on them, but just be careful you don't burn the onions. If it starts to get too hot you can turn your heat down. I have it at a sort of low medium heat. Just as the onions are starting to get colour on them, I'm going to add a teaspoon of garlic paste, and also a teaspoon of sliced ginger. Now I would usually use ginger paste, but sliced ginger or chopped ginger is just fine. And give that a good stir. I'm also going to add a teaspoon of salt. teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a teaspoon of ground coriander, and just half a teaspoon of ground cloves. I also like to add a teaspoon of Madras curry powder. 
and just give that a stir into the onions. Once that's fried, just for a few seconds on the pan, we can now add our tomatoes. We want to let these cook down until they almost form a paste. Okay, so our tomatoes have cooked down and formed almost like a paste. And this is when we add in our lentils and chickpeas. So once you've added your lentils, just give everything a good stir together. So once that's all combined guys, you just want to let that simmer for maybe 15 or 20 minutes, just until it starts to thicken. Now that that's been cooking for 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to add 150 grams of mango chutney. Now this is the secret ingredient to this recipe guys, and it will not taste the same without it. It really brings out a lot of flavour into the dish. Just give that a stir in guys. And that's really it. Um, now you want to serve this with rice. It can be eaten on its own quite nicely. Now this, this recipe will make quite a few decent portions so you can keep this in the fridge for at least three days or you can freeze it. What I'll say, in the fridge it seems to taste better each day. The more you leave it the more the spices seem to develop and bring out more flavour in the dish. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I will see you again soon. Thanks guys.